Oh, darn it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? <laughs> oh, you know, just when you think everything is working properly. <laughs> oh, boy. There. Better, warmer, closer. Hello, everybody. <laughs> El Taco Meat Taco. Thank you, thank you, thank you for one year. Holy potatoes, one year, good sir. Welsh boy, how are you? Caleb. Tokono Taku, good to see you as well. Quorum, glad to see you're doing well here. All right. So I clearly forgot to um, turn off a couple of things. <laughs> oh boy. Well, good to see you all in here today. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Glad to have you all in here today. Yes, it is a Welsh boy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a bit of a special day. It's a Thursday. The deuce is Astro doing here on a Thursday. <laughs> uh, and Jigsaw Nerd, you're doing great. Donated blood. It was still red. Excellent. Still warm. The blood that courses through your veins, I see. 
Welsh boy. Thank you very much for the 10 months. Holy moly. My goodness. Thank you very, very, very much. Hope everybody has been having a good week. Good to see you all again. Nothing to do with a certain telescope. Yesterday, earlier, um, really we were talking about James Webb. And we're always keeping an eye on that. However, today we're watching... We're going to be checking out... Yeah, not that. We're going to be checking out the rollout of NASA's SLS. And that is the mission that is going to be going... That is going to be taking humanity back to the moon. And the launch... The test launch for this day is going to be in May. But they're going to get everything rolled out onto the... Uh, onto pad 39B. And you're going to see that everything is... Is going to be working correctly and ready to go for the launch no earlier than... May 2022. So, this is a bit of a historic moment seeing seeing NASA return to Pad 39B, and that is um, that's very exciting. So, I figure we'll watch this thing roll out. It's going to take a while, so we got some time to hang out, chat. Maybe we'll throw the drop game on and other things like that. You know, it's just to watch history unfold with space exploration. Like we're going to be aiming to go back to the moon, and also because I want to solidify this as the kind of the next big space lego set that we purchase as well so i want to be able to make it as um prevalent as possible so glad to have y'all in here it is going to be it is very interesting there are plenty of and i love the fact that we can tie things in to lego as well as being space based and talking more about the artemis missions what they have planned um just the sheer scale of this entire setup so it is fantastic to have you all in here. As always, my name is Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. And, well, this is our weather at the moment. This is what we're dealing with. We have, we're at 15 degrees Celsius. We are well, and we're almost at 20 degrees today. That was absolutely bonkers to have the, uh, such a shift in the weather now. Where you can feel that spring, spring is in the air. All the frozen Cat poo is starting to thaw around here. Cloudy for you, Matt. No oh boy. I, I was kind of hoping we, there was a possibility of having some clear skies, but that quickly changed up there. Um, Third Rock. Good to see you. Uh, no gardening yet. Uh, there, there are still some days where we're going to be into sub-zero temperatures, but we are we we have things planned. We have things on the go. For um, we have some apple trees actually right now that are. Um, that are we starting to sprout? So hopefully we can start planting some more apple trees around the property. Uh, As glorious St. Patrick's Day, he sat in the driveway and soaked up a ton of vitamin D. Excellent, awesome jigsaw. We had uh, a little bit of a walk around outside today, but it's um, it, funny enough. We the the biggest sign of spring is that like all the flies have started to come back. Like the telescope was completely covered in flies. Why they chose my scope. Uh, apparently the scope that we have is a piece of shit, So. Uh, full moon. Best time to start your seeds inside until it starts getting warmer. Like I said, we do have some. Um, I, have, I have one of the one of the ghost peppers. I have the, the seeds harvested from that. So we are getting those um, ready to be planted. So we at least get some ghost peppers. But Andy, good to see you as well. How are you? How are you doing today? Yes, we were waiting for not this. <laughs> I had to make sure to turn off the drop uh, timer on there. Um, no, we're looking for... I'm looking for my YouTube. There we go. Okay, keeps getting pushed back for the NASA's broadcast. We're going to be tuning into that one. Um, there are a few others. Um, NASA Space Flight, that is one. Uh, it's a good one to watch. Unfortunately, we can't rebroadcast NASA Space Flight. So... Um, we'll watch NASA. It is the the global feed and the official kind of uh, news source from the as they're rolling out of the VAB. But yes, it is. Uh, it's good to have you all in here today. We are, like I said, we're just going to be we hanging out, watching it roll out, talking about um, kind of what the mission is all about, and just the excitement that's kind of been surrounding this, and just the. Um, it is how awesome things are going to be returning to aiming for a return to the moon and just pushing forward to everything that has been 
that has evolved from since uh, back in the uh, in the sixties when you know, when we landed on the moon before. So it's be interesting to see just how far technology is going to come along there. I just went out, grab pumpkins, lettuce, cucumbers, squash, broccoli, cauliflower, cat grass, cat nip. Still too early for tomatoes and peppers. Well, excellent. Third rock, you got a nice bounty going on there. Helther! What's up, Goth Fox? And a happy St. Patrick's Day to you, Andy Helther. What's going on, sir? How are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's it going, Raiders? What were you up to? What was going? What were you up to, Thor? Uh, ironically, it's a clear night here in the UK, but we have a full moon. That generally seems to be what occurs <laughs> whenever we have this full moon. It is like prime time to be uh, to be imaging. Yes. Uh, you processed M forty four. Ooh, excellent! How that? How that go? Uh, we're going to start making our cat treats to dog treats. Sounds good. Um, I think we are looking to do something similar as well. Uh, trust I've seen the Kenobi at the trailer. E e no, I've held off on that. There's a whole bunch of things I'm kind of <laughs> on the backlog. Also, I really need to watch Spider-Man No Way Home. It's like that. Again, that's another thing on the list. Oh, boy. So, yes. Um, no, definitely want to be able to uh, catch up on everything. Mm, much to watch you still have. Yes, I do. I really, really do. Uh, but we'll start to have... Um, Things kind of coming back to a regular schedule um, later on in the week. Actually, more more of next week, aiming to have um, kind of come back to a regular schedule. I'm uh, not going to lie, your mom legit cried as we watched the Crew Dragon uh, demo two go up. It's it, it is um it is emotional to watch a launch, and especially when there is um, when there are humans when there are humans aboard. Like it just it just really cranks up the the uh, the intensity. I'm uh, just getting. I didn't make spell right. No worries. <clears throat> uh, you and Ryan watched Spider Man the other night. Yes, thumbs up, thumbs up overall. Uh, Welsh boy. Yeah. We're doing good. Doing all right. Um, <clears throat> a, a note of things for this coming weekend. Friday, tomorrow night, we're going to have a stream. Um, Saturday, Sunday, that will be, uh, we'll have that time off. Um, as it is going to be uh, the weekend, I'm back with my family. We will be having my uh, my father's memorial service all over the weekend. So that will, those streams will be kind of pushed around possibly during the week. We will maybe do a bit of a, a fun Lego stream during the week just to kind of pad things out, have a couple of small sets to work on. But yeah, um, yes, uh, Welsh Boy, unfortunately, was on the uh, back on the 3rd of March um, when it happened. But uh, I gotta say we're we are. Yeah, it stinks. It sucks. But we are. Um, you know, it's all for it's all for the better now for him. <clears throat> no worries, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. It is like you know, we we've had uh, you know, uh, my dad, the old balls, was a, a staple in the community, and yeah, it's uh, it's weird that he's gone, but you know what? It's I don't know. I, I don't even know how to put any positive spin on it other than that, like heads are in a good space overall because we know. That it is, there's there's no more pain, there's no more suffering. But hey, it's um, you know, in in a way, somehow being able to keep our chins up about it that we had the time to be with them and say goodbye, um, yeah. <laughs> Kept telling you off for supporting the Canadians. 
<laughs> purely because you got given a shirt. Yes, and he would con he would be remiss if I did not continue to razz you about it. But yes, no, it's um, you know, as good as can be, um, as positive as a place that we're in. Kajad, what's this on a Thursday? A Thursday, my goodness, crazy, isn't it? But how you doing? Good to see you here. And why not? Good to see you as well. Hopefully things are going well in your end. Won't be around long. You got to get. Uh, Pardon me, you're going to go and get pissed at gravity. Oh. <laughs> uh, you could never get the hang of Thursdays. They're a weird one, isn't it? It's, it's like Friday light. He's going to Commander Sam. Or take the fight to gravity, depending. You're going to do some climbing, I see. Yes, yes. As long as you always win. All right, uh, Thor, you said you... Uh, posted a M44. I love the color. Love the color you got in there. All right, no, you always lose in the end, but you have to. You have some wins in the battles, the little victories, right? They'll, they'll, they'll pile up. Uh, Thor, I love the color in there. That's really nice. Uh, I'd show the little Gemini. I don't know. Did you? Was it in there? And Thor, a combination of some uh, some time on Orion. That's always good. Uh, way back on the on March. Where's that? Oh, yes. I love this one. I love the little dumbbell nebula. Or the... Uh, It's just, it, it's, it looks like a little candy wrapper as well. I like that. It is. And also, um, yeah, definitely want to go off, go after this one as well. Get some more time. Excuse me, International Space Station. Do you mind? Do you mind, ISS? We're, we're trying to look. Uh, sorry, I had some issues with the background uh, black, but could fix it. Took you nearly three hours today. Well, that, awesome. Good to see that, uh, that you got some time for some processing. But yeah, it's, it is... Definitely, um, there, there are some images that I want to go back and, uh, and fix up because I will be picking up the, uh, the, pic, the official PixInsight license as well now that we have our, uh, the, the Twitch payout did come through for the time when we reached that goal of, uh, that we put forth for over a month. And also for the, the current goal that we have, I'm still carrying over one of the challenges we had from our subathon. Of shaving my head, which will also come with a donation to the Canadian Cancer Society. Um, now, because we also kind of started things, there was the March didn't kind of officially start until the 13th. So this sub goal goes on until the 13th of April. So, um, you know, if if you all if we reach that in that time frame, then yeah, live on the stream pretty much right away. Um, off goes the hair and out goes a donation to to the Canadian Cancer Society in support of bladder cancer research. So that is all up to you guys. And as, uh, as always, I appreciate the support. It is never necessary for what we do here. Um, <laughs> Good job. Ha, and you don't mean hydrogen alpha. Oh my goodness. Well, Kajak, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you very much to the get for the gifted subs to Zookia Media. Got a story to tell about Zookia and Taco. To Stephen McNaught Real. One of my favorite cotton poly blended streamers, Amish Ace. A fantastic By Lego streamer as well. Doug for short. I have the mustache. And ooh, oh, and also a very, very, very uh, thank you very much to Muddy Knees. 
Madinis. <clears throat> oh boy. Uh, what about the? What about the beard? Is it going to? Is it going as well? The be no, the beard. The beard will stay. The, the beard. This this remains. This one. This one stays here. Belch boy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Holy potatoes. Um, my goodness, Welsh boy. Thank you. Thank you very much. To the gifted sub, to Matt the Fluffy Gamer. Houston, you are go and throttle up. I don't know where that was. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Matt Fluffy Gamer, Barefoot Arky, <laughs> Mashu, as well as True Death Eater, and last but not least, Hind TV. Thank you very much for the gifted subs to these fine members of our community. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so apparently somewhere uh, I have the. Um, this is Apollo Mission Control. <laughs> Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth's team is on station here in the main Matt. operations control room, ready to assume the control of this flight at Tower Thank Claire. you. Thank you very much for the 100 bits. I appreciate it. And, yeah, that's, um, Commander Neil Armstrong has that's some hot stuff coming up. Final, uh, appreciate it. What's going on? Doug, how you doing? Spacecraft also now is on full internal power. How are you doing today? Good to see you in here. Yes, I appreciate it. Reaching starting at a level three hype drain. A little bit of the remnants from our, our subathon. Now also, I have something else. There's other audio going on. I need to find out where it is. Automatic system with the emergency detection system. That system that would cue the astronauts. Yes, we're going to be paying attention over to NASA's YouTube channel. We're now coming up on a 10 minute mark. You think you're still here? Let me check. Oh my goodness. All we did the uh, Good shot. Uh, this has been reported to the test supervisor Thank you very much for 45 minutes. Okay, Good shot. Thank you so much for the gift of subs. Taking us to a level four. Starting that clock down. From five minutes once again. Oh, pardon me, you need a guitar, sing Space Oddity. Matt! Matt, thank you very much for the five dollars towards astronomy upgrades. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes, Doug, hopefully you're doing well, Matt. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for bringing us up to this point. At least attaining our next level in the hype train. I greatly appreciate it. Um, we will be doing at the... Um, from, from the subathon out with the completion of a level 5 hype train. Um, we'll be get, doing a giveaway of uh, some Astro Canuck merch. Uh, I'd like a t-shirt, some stickers, or a mug and some stickers, or stickers and some stickers, like something like that, just to like, kind of give back. We'll do a draw um, when we get to those, if we get to those points, but that is just the uh, things that we're doing, upgrading some things. Uh, some stickers and some stickers. Yeah. Stick I, you know, I hear you like stickers, so we put stickers on your stickers. But it's, uh, so we have some, there are some peanuts. I will, uh, quorum for that 45. Usually it's 50, but we're in a, we will, I will, I will honor the, the, the hot nuts for the, for, for the 45 bits. Um, and usually the first few peanuts always give me the hiccups. So after the, uh, the completion of the hype train, 
We'll get some nuts in my mouth, and hopefully I'll start to hiccup. And I never listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> but hopefully everybody has been having a good week and Holy getting ready to wrap things up. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I must have had some potato in my ear or something like that. Can't be sure what was just said. Uh, Lexi finally did her first ever Astro Photo Processing after she took the data like two years ago. Excellent! I saw a tweet that she was um, just putting Photoshop down. She'd been looking at the screen for way too long. Awesome. That's so cool. Has she uh, has it, has it been posted yet? Or... Um, yeah, well, uh, let me know. Look forward to seeing that. Picking Discord, excellent. We'll pop over it there. I'll pop some nuts in my mouth. We'll pop over in Discord, look at the image, then we'll check out the rollout. Hopefully, it hasn't started for. Uh... Dad, did you snatch the quote function away from us? It does go away during this one. Um, I think that was before I fixed it, so I'm going to have to. I'll be putting that back in. I'll put the quote back in there. There are some things I know if it goes away from the screen, um, it mucks up the timing because I still haven't had this. This is still a static timer. <laughs> it's not. Uh, until I can make it dynamic, then we'll uh, start mucking things about with uh, other elements of the stream. But no, I appreciate, I appreciate you guys bringing us to a level 4 hype train. I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, like I said, at the conclusion, we'll throw some nuts in the mouth, um, maybe get the hiccups, and we'll check out how things are going with the rollout for NASA's SLS, the first phase of the Artemis 1. And that launch will begin no earlier than, than early May. So, yes, I appreciate it very much. Uh, your hype about it just saw us can't get over the damn JWST calibration mission. That thing is awesome as well. We're going to look at that in a little more depth. Um, so we'll check out, um, check that out very, very shortly. But thank you guys so much for getting up to this level. I see the timing is a little off. Down here says five seconds. Up there says ten seconds. But hey, we'll, uh, we got that all good. Thank you all so much. And if you did get a hype emote in there, feel free to drop that in the chat. Thank you all so much for that. Greatly appreciated. Alex Vixen, how you doing, Alex? Uh, will SOS be doing a choir test? Um, what will they be doing today? They're going to be filling things up and getting ready. They'll uh, to do some tests to make sure everything is good to go. And then, like I said, they'll be doing the rollout. Sorry, the rollout, the uh, the test launch. Or they'll be launching for um, a test launch in May. Yes, thank you all so much for the gifted subs and the bits. And like I said, 100 bits. We'll do some peanuts out here. <laughs> oh, wonderful! Go pop like SpaceX. I severely doubt it. All right, there are some of the the peanuts. Thank you all so much. Hello, Rexy. How are you doing? <clears throat> Rexy, how are you doing? Good to see you in here. Oh, the parachute droplets, that needs to be turned off too. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> oh. <coughs> Those for <coughs> sugar lumps. Those first nuts. Uh, yes, LS engine and our former shuttle engines. <clears throat> Part of it being a test engineer, software engineer, you test everything. Uh, all right. Well, the next round of the uh, of the gifted subs from Kajad to Arkatufus. Thank you so much, Gavriel. Getting in on that. V Cassins, Def Hacker, and as well as Ditty's paintings. Uh, 
thank you all so much. Um, again, the <clears throat> the physical and visual app <laughs> representation of the support, I appreciate it very much. <clears throat> we have to do some kind of event for clearing the spike of appreciation. I don't, I, I, I don't clear them. I keep them. I keep my spikes. Now, it could probably withstand a fire, but then I don't know if that's if that's right. <clears throat> but I do have the I do have the previous. We do have a previous spike. And there is the first spike back there. <clears throat> oh, as George Decay would say, oh my. Uh, a, a paper mache telescope. We would do a paper mache rocket. Speaking of rockets, this is not a rocket. <laughs> All right, NASA has begun their uh, their coverage for the rollout. <laughs> you aren't even that special. You're what, what? You're more than special. You are specific. You're unique. Y'all are tremendous. And a soothing sip of coffee, which still kind of moves around the ghost peppers. Why Why were those three nuts so freaking hot? It usually doesn't happen. At least they're not, they don't... <sighs> okay, we're good. Oh my god, it looks like a huge Johnson. What do you got on the radar? Yeah, that's what they need more uh <laughs> or the Austin Powers. Well, that is um I mean, there are, there are some there's some fact sheets on the SLS. I mean, this thing is absolutely impressive. It is, um, it'd be one of the most tallest ships to to be uh, flown out. The Delta Heavy, um, being NASA's one of NASA's largest prior to this. It is just, it is so incredibly impressive. So this this uh, it travels at about one mile per hour. Look at that, 9,999 9, watching. Okay, now it's now it's uh, a little more. But the uh, the crawl that this thing needs to go. So um, will we be here? We'll be, we'll be watching this thing crawl out for the next four hours. Maybe. But it also said this whole process could take anywhere from, from, uh, from 6 to 12 hours. What I wanted to do is just to be able to, to watch this start to roll out. Um, hang out with you guys and if you you, you come in you come out you, you, you lurk it is greatly appreciated i want to be able to share more of these moments and i think looking back yesterday i probably should have been a little more on the ball to uh to jump in and look at that image of uh of web from uh, from from james webb coming through but i mean there's also been so many of us uh, can you imagine me the driver of that thing? Well, this is going to be boring. I would be so nervous. Even the fact that even though it's, it stays erect by its sheer weight, that it's not just going to fall over. Um, but it is just, that's got to be such a nerve wracking drive. And just absolutely impressive watching this thing roll, especially when it's, uh, I don't know how much testing they are going to be doing. Like I said, they are going to be filling up with about 700, I think they said about 700,000 liters of um, of liquid oxygen in the tanks. So actually to get things ready and pressurized. Oh, 
by its sheer weight. <laughs> the girth of the spaceship. Okay. <laughs> Said it was on cooldown. <laughs> Speed bump. <laughs> uh, what are they saying? An uncrewed test flight will be a final proving of every system in every component in the harshness of space. A mission that, when successful, will open the door for the moonwalkers and lunar experiments. Now, I don't know if they're going to show it, but there was an infographic of, of what the mission is going to be and how, um, you know, using Earth for a gravity assist as, it, as the Orion ship sends out. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> it's just look how slow that thing's moving. But it's so amazing to see this thing finally going out towards the uh, towards the pad, um, and it, it's going to be like, ridiculously exciting. Especially that um, we can follow. We'll be able, we'll be following along with um, with it like we were with Webb. Uh, lots of updates coming from uh, from James Webb. Um, you know, its current position, what it's been doing. Now they're talking about uh, fixing the mirrors on Webb. We're going to jump over to James Webb for a moment. Um, of adjusting the mirrors into in nanometer um, increments, and that is thinner than the width of human hair. That they're making these fine adjustments, and there was a comparative image of the uh, of that selfie that we saw earlier on, and then the aligned mirror image, and it is just so incredibly crisp, and yeah, just the fact of what we're seeing. Holy potatoes! Now. Uh, how mad are we going to be? Uh, it's mad how we're going back to the moon. I know, right? Science! Belint, how you doing? Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing, sir? Welcome. Now, where is the... I had the image of Web. I had it queued up, and... It's somewhere. It's it's moving. <laughs> we're doing well today. It is... We are... They are... NASA, we are... We're rolling all the SLS out. <laughs> oh, um, I had it. There we go. That image of the uh, from James Webb Space Telescope. That was uh, like from what we saw before with all the images, all the stars, um, all the images of that one star. And now everything is aligned. And the fact that we got to this point. So this is one of the the first the telescope alignment evaluation images from James Webb. Um, and it's absolutely ridiculously incredible. Because like when we take images here, nothing nearly as, um, as, as amazing as what Webb has been doing. However, it's this star, this in, uh, in Ursa Major was their focusing star. That's the object of affection in this image. But it's everything else. It's all these little faint fuzzies that are galaxies. Millions, hundreds of millions of light years beyond the target that we're looking at. It is absolutely incredible. And that's what, what I love about astrophotography is that even when you're looking at one thing, there are thousands of other things to look at. <laughs> they, they stole your image, Thor. And also the fact that the title here is blocking a couple of galaxies, like some really interesting spiral galaxies as well. So please take off the text, NASA, and just show us the whole image. Like there are clusters and possible binary galaxies in these images. Uh, there is an image that compares... Um, where was it? Of the, there was a ground-based image of a couple of galaxies in this area these ones and you could not resolve this galaxy or the, like this galaxy and this one here were they almost look more like elliptical galaxies because they were just so blobby 
And now we're getting like resolution on these. Like we can, we can go in farther. We can get it closer and still like, again, if it's not a bright point of light, if it's like a little faint smudge, it's another galaxy. It is absolutely incredible to see. And this is just from the, this isn't even like a true survey image that they're taking. This is just from getting things aligned. So, I mean, the promise of how awesome web is going to be. And that the fact that it's working like beyond more of what they were expecting, like working so much more efficient than they could have realized. And like, how, I, I, I'm so excited to see what water, is going to be water, coming out. Water, 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 this, the water, 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 water. Thank you, Goth Fox. Even close to the start, you can see others behind. Exactly because they are using such a narrow band, and it is in the infrared, that even the uh, the light from this star, like, you can still, there's, there's, now, I don't, I can't say for sure if it's an artifact. It doesn't match up with the, the diffraction spikes on here, so that could be another galaxy. That's another galaxy behind, um, that portion and it, it is it is ridiculous so even when, when we're taking our images and we have like these little faint fuzzies obviously we don't have the resolving power at the um, of web but again it's the integration time being able to catch more of these images and it, it's just everything like everything even beyond the spikes you could probably process this image a little farther and see everything else that is behind the light of this star. Like the, the structure of the galaxies, and those double barred spiral galaxy here. And we're looking at a lot of these face on as well. Like, and again, there's another galaxy cut off here. Now, if I was looking at this, I would almost want to say that there were if there's maybe one dot, I would say potentially it could have been even a supernova remnant in that galaxy. But there's two. What are the chances? Webb is imaging a galaxy and you're catching two supernovae. But even looking on this screen versus on my monitor here, there's still even more faint fuzzies. And then this whole cluster of galaxies. Look at the shape. It almost reminds me of, of Markarian's chain. The way how these are... Uh, are laid out. So you got these three points, possible stars, but again, there's even this galaxy a cluster throughout here. It is, it's amazing. And this is just looking out toward Ursa Major. So, I mean, We've looked at, well, let's go over to, uh, we've looked at the star in, in Stellarium. I don't know if it's going to show up as uh, from one of our, our previous searches. Yes, there it is. All right. So this star, HD 84406. Let's, uh, let's turn off our atmosphere. Deep sky. This is the star. I'm going to go change and get ready for gra gravity struggles. No worries, Kajad. Glad to have you in here with us today. So this was the star they were focusing on. And even with the, um, like a lot of the, a lot of the, the surveys are going to change as well with more information coming in from web, which is amazing. Like I am stupidly stoked for this. Baba Zalik, what's going on, Ma? How are you? How are you doing? So this star here, HIP 48034 or HD 84406. This was the star that James Webb Space Telescope was looking at. This was the image of that star from the James Webb Space Telescope. Oh, hey, Ma. <laughs> hey, Ma 212. 
<laughs> that's that's interesting because Baba Zelnik is my mum. <laughs> Uh, watching SLS towards this way out of the VAB. Yes, that, that is what we are keeping an eye on as well. Amish Ace, how are you doing, sir? Good to see you in here today. Yes, this was the, the image from James Webb that was released yesterday, and we are keeping an eye on NASA, on their, I was going to say on their Facebook, on their YouTube page. There we go. So they are rolling out the SLS rocket, which is also, which is also a Lego set that we are looking at, that we are looking to pick up. Now that is, uh... ooh, speaking of Lego sets, there's another thing we want to quickly jump over to as well, because there is this, inspired by the Artemis missions by the SLS, um, the rocket launch center from Lego City that is available. Um, is that the last thing uh, planet sees when Starkiller base fires? I hope not. <laughs> so this one looks cool. I mean, this one fits right into our wheelhouse. Um, we do have a goal. It's not, I mean, this, the set was just released. Um, our stretch goal for this one is, um, is this one here. I am just saying if you, you meet halfway, we will pick this set up. There's no end to this goal. It's a brand new set. But if we when we reach that 10,000 bits, um, then we'll make the purchase of the rocket launch center added on there. I don't know why they're calling these Lego City. I, I guess it's the only kind of series they could um, they could get things loaded into. Uh, or not loaded into, um, associated with until they actually make maybe a space. They relaunch the space category. What's going on 3D printing? How are you doing? Yes, happy Thor's Day to you as well. It is Thursday. It's a bit of a different day that we're on. I know it's uh, um, far from the, from the regular schedule, but when when the schedules change, when there's something cool to be checking out, especially with the uh, with NASA launching its SLS or this Lego set. <laughs> um, Um, excuse me? Vape Doom? Oh my god! Holy crap! Vape Doom, my goodness! Um... Holy smokes, thank you very much for the 5,000 bits. Holy smokes. Um, that's just, I'm trying not to say like, holy <laughs> Well, we're halfway there to halfway there. Oh my goodness. Um, thank you. Oh. <laughs> we'll take this and run. Holy potatoes. said the bleep cancel the cancel it out um i said <laughs> possibly maybe even <laughs> <laughs> the oh i can still see the weird faces there too <laughs> oh um <laughs> it's still on this one wait wait <laughs> 
Wait, let's, uh, we've got, no, no, that's not, that, that's not the one. There we go. Okay. <sighs> All right. Vape Doom. My goodness. Thank you so much for the 5,000 bits. Um, now, we also do have another thing that, that has been going on, or that has just been introduced. Not that one. Our message board back here. Four or five thousand bits. If you would like, you can send me a message that you would like to have posted up on there. It is very similar to what we have for this board. Um, and yes, that is the, uh, the threshold of that as well. So if you have a, a small little message you would like, we'll put it up there for the next um, few weeks. Is it two weeks or two? I don't know. Exclamation point board brings up the info. But yes, if you'd like, you're more than welcome to send me a message. We'll get a des our board designed up there for you as well. That is also... Uh, there's also some hot sauce involved in that because that is 5,000 bits as well. Oh, uh, Luxie, how are you doing? Went inside to grab a cup of coffee and hot sauce. Remember the coffee stuff, grab the hot sauce. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. I will give you a uh, also a complimentary bowl of the world's worst cereal. Now, normally, I see I, I've switched up some thresholds here. Um. Where is, um, we have, no, usually for the 500 bits, it's this, it's the Sweeter Reaper. Exactly 770 bits is this one, the Seven Pot Dougla, a variation of the Scorpion Pepper. And for the, exactly the 2000 bits, we have Mr. Payne. Now, seeing how that was um, 5,000, we'll do a bowl of the world's worst cereal with a little bit of Mr. Payne. Um, while we're prepping that, let's go over and see how NASA is doing, rolling out its the SLS, which is what we're, we're aiming for here. <laughs> Ma says, OMG. All right. Again, flavor and, and heat. We got our moon cheese bites. Not a hobbit. Hello, hobbits. I just had a look at the SLS Lego. 125 bucks in the UK. See, that's why I always found, like, for some reason, the, uh, the UK prices when I was living in the UK. It was that much um, better. Okay. Now, this is Mr. Payne. This stuff actually genuinely hurts. So, yes, it is a bowl of the world's worst cereal. But I also... Okay. That's probably going to be too much. But for the... <clears throat> for the 5,000 bits, usually it is... Uh, you know what? It, it's... It's, thanks. <laughs> now, these are from Pepper Palace. They have, um, they're made out of Tennessee, but there is a, a shop in, uh, in Blue Mountain. And um, yeah, they're very friendly up there. Someone queue up the Johnny Cash. Oh, like it even smells like it hurts. <clears throat> Pity you tomorrow when you have a Batman. Yeah, I know. You know, the, um, that sucks. The moon cheese bites help with flavor. Can you see already? <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
when your pain hurts. Moon cheese bites are delicious. Mr. Payne hurts. Look how... Huh. <laughs> <clears throat> we get hiccups like last time. I don't feel the hiccups coming on. <laughs> uh, what's up, Muddy Knees? Welcome back to Tongue Torture. Yes. Look, my... Oh, my God. I can already <laughs> feel it. <clears throat> And the thing with Mr. Payne, this is a slow build. It is. Oh. It stays with you. Mr. Payne sticks with you like a bad haircut. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> fire in the hole, fire in the hole, out the holes. Oh, but look at this. This is what we're here for right now. The rollout of the of SLS. What music are they playing? Something to get dinged for, right? Oh, good. Lovely. 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 <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, uh, Hobbit, you're having ice cream in my honor. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh. Also, let's drop a uh, couple of shout outs here. <clears throat> it just seemed like pain. It, it's there is a tiny, tiny little bit of flavor, and then it just hurts. <clears throat> and then it, it is just all the pain. Now this one, the sweeter Reaper, I could eat this one all day long. It's Carolina Reapers, but it's got like, it is very sweet. It hits you a little bit later, but it doesn't, you know, you got a Reaper, but it's not too bad of a burn. This one, it, I want to say it almost smells like gasoline. And it tastes like just has its smells. <laughs> all right, you don't really mind hot sauce, but flavor has to be good. Exactly. That's what I'm going for. This one. Um, the seven pot dougla. It has almost like a bit of a, of a black pepper smell to it. Um, mixed with kerosene and, um, mini palm. But that is the, like I said, I've, I've added specific reward, specific events for the 777 bits and the, uh, the 1500 bits for the, for the Mr. Payne. Uh, as well as the five for the sweeter reaper. Alex, 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 why not? One credit for violation of the public morality statute. Burn the face. Oh my goodness, why not? <laughs> Thank you very much for the hundred bits. Uh, can you link something in chat? Uh, yes, by all means. Why not? Thank you very much for the 100 bits. Burn the face. What are we looking at here? Hero Forge. Okay. Um. We get pretty much a whole chip there for the for the haunted ghost peppers. Why not? Thank you very much. Uh, Alex, what is this? Is this me? Oh my God, that is so cool. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is so awesome. <laughs> Do 
Now I need to get some boots like that. <laughs> um, also, FYI, today, um, you know, I am wearing socks. I am wearing socks today. There's no no Lego Firewalk. <laughs> That's so cool. So can I save that as an avatar? Oh, it moves. Oh, look at my butt. <laughs> That's tremendous. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. It is very regal. <laughs> I like the telescope. Very nice. Very nice. Um, if you go to the name, take a screenshot or do what Belint, uh, Belint did in bookmark it. <laughs> that is, that is really, <laughs> that is cool. It's what you can... That's awesome. <laughs> Dr. Professor, what's up, Doctor? How are you doing? Uh, there's a little cart you can buy the STL from. <gasps> Very cool. <laughs> That's nifty. <laughs> How you doing, Doctor? <laughs> oh, okay. Good, the fire fire is the is, is subsiding now you had to replace your uh, vr cable uh, for 90 bucks Ooh, what cables are used for vr actually i never thought about that is it like a different kind of hdmi or something else that is awesome alex Thank you. Oh, boy. Okay. My lips are probably still going to be um, red for a while. <clears throat> uh, basically, a two, two times 2160p, 100 hertz. Ah. Uh, Dang, that, that, that's, you gotta wonder sometimes, why do cable it? Why does cabling cost so much? <laughs> All right, so this, this is also why we're, why we're rolling out today, checking out what's going on with, uh, with NASA, the SLS. And that is just, it is such an impressive sight to see. Uh, it's a display port cable that does 2160p at 100 hertz with the USB inside it. So that is uh, is a is a very substantial cable. Does it look nice though? Did it make it look good? It's just it's so awesome to see them getting this rolled out and getting things, um, you know, taking those next steps towards going back to the moon and. I mean, it is ridiculously, uh, uh, no, it's thick like your HDMI cables. <laughs> Look at that. That is so cool. <laughs> Just. <sh> <laughs> mm. 
blast out of my head. <laughs> uh, good evening, Lux. Uh, where's the countdown? <laughs> uh, launch for SLS is going to be no earlier than May. So we have um, we've got about another month and a half to go. I guess it's probably safe to say two months till this launches. But they are taking it out to the uh, to pad 39B, um, getting it fueled up. Uh, I think they said they're putting about 700,000 liters in there uh, and into the, the rocket to get it all uh, prepped. And I think they will do a couple other tests and then they'll be bringing it back in. 4.1 billion US dollars later. And here is, and then there's the, there is the result of... Uh, of 10 billion US dollars, wherever it went, where'd it go? There, and then here's 10 billion dollars. I'm gonna say, well, freaking worth it. Uh, you feel like rockets are so inefficient. What would you propose as the alternative? Uh, possibly weather balloons? I mean, we're looking at JWST, and we're gonna be coming back to this image, like, probably even more so than SLS. I mean, it's like, <laughs> that's the, uh, the, the the peanuts from earlier what we were marveling earlier was all of the galaxies in this image <laughs> uh, you started watching Space Force on Netflix I, I watched like three episodes of Space Force I need to go back and start over again I started watching it just before I was moving just before the, the move from the UK and I, I tell you, those, those episodes did not stick. So yeah, I definitely want to check that out. Uh, yeah, it does go back to the balloon idea, but you just can't help but thinking float to floating something in the ex, into the exosphere, then igniting the rockets would be more efficient. I think it is it is also getting that that weight. That's the only thing. Uh, how much is how much um, hydrogen or helium is going to be needed to bring that up? Uh, it's a bit of a slog. You love the concept, but the show is just not great. Pardon me. Let's see. How there's. It, it feels. You know what? It, it. To me, right now, TV feels like it is very tough to hit that sweet spot of what's entertaining, but also still being able to tell a story. I know a lot of people are saying I. I have Book of Boba Fett like ready to go. It is in my, I, I pressed play and I had to, I left the screen. So it is there on my continue watching on Disney plus, but I know like something like people are saying Book of Boba Fett, those first three episodes feel like a bit of a, a bit of effort before you start getting to it. But again, it's different than a movie. And I know we're kind of in this time of watching very digestible bits of, uh, of TV. Um, uh, press the link. Stop phrase, uh, praising Star Wars when you can watch the real Star Wars. What do we got here? Yes. Oh, thank you, Lux. Thank you. I was. I wanted to see this. Uh, I wanted to find this image of that comparison between Spitzer and um, and and uh, and Webb. I need to really start bookmarking a lot of these. Uh, yeah, uh, Vape Doom, you haven't watched season two yet. But yeah, it's um, it's on my list. It's still in. If you if you look at my list of Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime as well as Disney Plus, you got to be figured like you got to you're just gonna say, uh, Tom, stop streaming. Just watch your watch watch your TV and then come back and report on everything. Uh, well, whether the president invented uh, invented the Space Force is a... Whatever president invented the Space Force is a goddamn hero to humanity. Uh, Book of Boba Fett is excellent. Uh, Muddy Knees Book of Boba Fett was awful. You really wanted it to be good. He was always your favorite character, but the show was just painfully bad. Interesting. Uh, as good as Mando was, Book of Boba Fett was equally terrible. Uh, rumor that they're going to be getting a Darth Reaven series. See, I never see uh, as far as like kind of the um, the other 
canon of of of, uh, of Star Wars that wasn't kind of in like those main um, series that kind of the, the come off of the of the Clone Wars. Um, I feel that those are some incredibly rich stories that I haven't been able to really sink my teeth into. What's up, Harbstrom? Uh, I don't think a Boba Fett could be classified as awful. It's different. We're in a new age of Star Wars where we can dive into very contained stories. It's not going to feel like the space opera we learned from. This is true as well. I say it, it's it's that, that fine line between um, what we've been viewing in the past. You know, everything that's kind of resolved in... Within, like, the, the short little 90 to, you know, 120 minutes of storytelling. Uh, Star Wars, you watch for the action scenes, not the depth. And, I mean, it's, you know, we said about, like, everything for movies. It's like, you know, we want to be entertained. And I think it also depends on what you're looking to get out of a series as well. I uh, thought so I sprayed for those things. Well, clearly they have adapted. The weather has gotten... Look Look how warm our weather is right now. This is ridiculous. That's our last little vestige of snow that we have. Like, there was... Like, the whole ground was covered today. We got up to 17 degrees Celsius, and it is gone. It's, ri it's ridiculous. I know. Like, I had snow in some areas up to my waist. And now it's just... It's just mush. Are you not entertained? I am thoroughly entertained. Hopefully, y'all are entertained as well. Um, he also goes, No, I haven't watched any of Picard. Season 2. Uh, spring is the thing. It's the thing of the past now. We used to have snow until late April, sometimes even May. And it's gone by mid-March some years. I mean... Now we got to watch out for any little pockets of uh, of thawed cat poo out there. That's the real danger. Imagine, imagine walking outside, going to do some gardening, and you slip and cat. Where is? Okay, I also need... okay. I'm going to organize my tabs as well here. Put these over to where we are. where I'm most likely sitting around on Firefox. I probably have about like 80 different tabs open here. Uh, what's SLS doing? It is playing the tuba. <laughs> American Chris Holy Hansen. Potatoes. What's going on, Chris? How are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Buddy D's, you're not following Shrek at all, but you just found out that they cast Stacey Abrams as the president of the, of the United Earth. Interesting. Interesting. Orion! <laughs> so when will the front fall off? Hopefully never. How are you doing, Orion? Um, I liked Picard. But I would want to watch it again. I felt like we watched... We, we watched Picard in a, uh, a bit of a state of... Of flux, I want to say. Like, I think almost like everything... Even, like, Loki... I watched Loki three times now. And for the sake of catching up with... Um, first, Mrs. Canuck and I were, were watching Loki. And then Mrs. Canuck in law wanted to watch Loki. So we started over. Um, we had watched three episodes. We went back and watched all three episodes. And then we watched about well, four episodes. And then we started getting things ready for the move. And we had fallen out of Loki. So we figured we had to go back and watch Loki again. And then my mom wanted to watch Loki, so her and I watched, we watched Loki one night, and we went through for about, we watched all five episodes one evening, and then all four of us got together and finally watched the last episode, and I need to watch the last episode all over again. Loki runs through my veins, I close my eyes, and all I see is Tom Hiddleston. It's um, not a bad thing, but it's not a good thing. Uh, you've been raging. You've been a raging Trekkie since you were five. Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, hacked your first TV, a black and white you snagged from yard sale when you were 11 to watch Voyager on UPN. <gasps> Voyager on UPN, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, and you hate Picard. 
what is it that what what is it about Picard that you just was it was it too much of the past that was forced back upon us? Uh, is that a command yet? The front of the video fell off yet? No, not yet. Um, it's still on the list. It's on the um, on on the things to do. One thing that I'm going to be reinstating is when I'm going to switch into a um, command point, which we are sorry, not a command point, a channel point redeem. Uh, usually before it used to be bits, but I'm going to uh, initiate this as a um, as channel points because sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. Where if we were to turn off our lights, there's not a whole lot of me that we can see. But if we turn on the infrared camera, you can see me. I can't hide from you at all. Yes, this is a true infrared camera. You can see my veins and everything too. So I will be aiming to get this reinstated, re uh, reintegrated within the channel. Uh, Picard threw out the cannon so hard and it uh, mucked up with every character. Chris, you collected 75 gigs of pictures from where? Uh, this is why you refuse to watch the show Discovery. Discovery canon as well. And that's the other thing. It's like you, you, you start to tinker too much with a good thing. All right, let's get the... Uh, Let's get our lights back on here, shall we? So yes, I'll get that the the Xbox Connect infrared camera back into the rotation for some channel points. <laughs> uh, fun fact: you can get LED spotlights to set up for uh, for an IR camera. It's interesting to see what you can um, what can be revealed with an IR camera. Like one small thing, you're just seeing more veins, you know. Um, but I'm trying to think of some other things that we can do with the IR camera that is, that will always be invisible to us here until that's uh, enabled. So again, some other things to try to play around with it. it. For some reason, it wouldn't work for the longest time. And after some updates, now it works again. Um, even if I turn it on this way, it doesn't even matter if these lights are on. You can't even see that the lights are on in here. I could turn them off right now. And this camera wouldn't change. Uh, buy a USB IR LED to play with. Ooh. You know those little, the, like the fans that spin that have like the message in there? Is there something you could do with, like, with an IR LED? Hmm. I don't have any remote controls in this room that I could have, uh, That we could use. Uh, five bucks. Yeah, I'll check them out. You can get an IR laser that draws. Ooh. Do you have links to these? It, it's also amazing that this this whole structure is being moved out. Like it isn't just like this the small this tiny little gantry that the uh, the rocket is attached to. Like it is the whole setup, aside from the supports on the inside. Like that is uh, that is tremendous. So it's moved out a little bit I there. Have the mustache. What mustache? Oh, it's this, it's this mustache. Yeah, this is, a, this is a good mustache to use. Look at this. That is amazing. And in this whole time, what have been we've been doing here for like an hour and 20 minutes. So it's moved about that far. Oop, oh, let's get back to uh, live here. Yeah, good. There we go. It is a slow moving vehicle, but you know what? It is awesome to see uh, what's going on with all of this. Um, oh, look, here is everything that we want to know about the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. Thankfully, that didn't show any of my information. <laughs> So 
So I'm thinking that I'm going to have to... Um, a lot of these commands are to do with numbers for the all the snap camera effects. I think I'm going to have to change them to letters. Let's see, what are they saying right now? We are Artemis. Good night. <laughs> wow. Uh, laser logo projector is a little is a little niche for the infrared. That looks like you need to replace the diode. Well, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be at first to a little bit of mucking about with some things if it's easily replaceable. So this is what we're looking forward to on the um, early May. For the launch of the the Artemis One, so ho hopefully this is going to. Are they playing? They're play, playing. Yeah, they're playing some music over there. Uh, then you get a laser logo projector, but with an IR laser. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be really interesting. So there was a, I'll see if I can find it. Dude, I think it might have actually been in here of the, um, what path they're going to be taking around the moon for the, uh, for the first launch. We'll have to check that one out. Um, but it'd be really, it'd be awesome to see this out there. And uh, so it's a four mile journey from the uh, vehicle assembly building out to the uh, to pad 39B. Uh, I don't have a UV camera yet. No, not yet. Um, I may have another um, camera I could possibly modify, but I need to make sure, need to make like quadruply sure that we're not going to need that camera anymore. Because you can astro, you can astro modify your cameras and it just takes off the um, any of the filters that are already built in just to make it more uh, the cheap under the term UV cosmetic cam or you can take a camera apart and remove a filter. Um, yeah, that's it. it's the cosmetic camera. I guess I have to see what the cost difference would be because, you know, we have our we have the IR camera, and that was one of the things I wanted to do was have um, some more redeems where you were looking at in specific wavelengths of light, or at least adjusting the camera to make it look like um, how it would how it would be viewed with the uh, in in HA. How would I look in um, like oxygen three? What different w end of the wavelength would things look different? But with the IR and the UV are two wavelengths that we can isolate with the camera and actually have a genuine view of those. So that was something I had like cooked up a while back. And once things had been moved over, like the infrared camera had, they said, but the connect had stopped working and stopped properly responding. But now with everything going on, it's um, like the, for some reason, the latest updates seem to jive again with the uh, with the connect, which is kind of weird. So now that that is uh, seemingly working again, but it, it, I've noticed when I've been testing things out, it does cut out. So that's why before originally it was 85 bits to uh, op to turn the camera on. But if it didn't work, I would feel supremely bad that someone had donated bits and the camera didn't work, which was the whole point of that. So um, Right now, this is just kind of me testing things out, making sure. Uh, both chips are pretty cheap. You put them in some kind of a uh, robo click wheel. That'd be interesting to check out. Um, so you said just look for a, a UV cosmetic cam.
Let's see. Um, Oh, the telescope, the, uh, the cameras are, are sensitive to it. But then again, it'll... Uh, let's see, how much do one of these... No, that's, that's makeup. I want makeup. A UV camera. This looks like it is like. Uh, the magnifying lens on the front of the telescope. There is the there's a secondary mirror on the front of the scope, depending on what kind of telescope you have or the. Um, if it's a reflector, then the, the primary mirror is in the back. If it's a refractor, you got the. Um, well, you get just the, the optical tube assembly. You have the objective in the front. Uh, UV cameras are universally CCD cameras. They are only restricted to the resolution and limitations of the CCD. Therefore, resolutions range from, range from low definition to extreme definition, 20 by 48. That would just be a matter of seeing um, where we can get said cameras. Camera function video. Uh, the objective is the light, but in your eye looks through. Uh, the eye would just look through the, um, just through the eyepiece. <clears throat> so I'm looking at. Uh, it may have a fancier name, but if it's escaping, if it's escaping both of our brains at the moment. Beauty Salon Facial Care Tool Portable 3D Facial UV Light Camera, 2500 US dollars. A, let's see, we can have a, a modified camera. And just get a UV filter. Now we want a, we want a UV pass, is what we want. <clears throat> I say the cameras would be on that and the robot would wheel over to the next. Uh, well, what I have right now, I'll show you guys what, what uh, For the uh, the cameras, there's the there's the connect, and there is there is that. So that's what we that's what I'm working. This is my camera setup at the moment. So for our our overhead cam, which we see down here. I mean, there's there's probably tons more that we can do with the Connect as well. It will also, it will also the Connect will make a virtual green screen, uh, very much very similar to what I have with everything right now. So if I were to let's see, I can should you know, this should work if we turn on the Connect, then we have. We have me, me, and connect me. Yes, what what to do with the depth on the connect? That's another thing to be thinking about. <laughs> this is a bit of a trippy effect. So what could we do with the 3D model then? Be interesting to see what we can do.
Now, maybe. I mean, I guess we could, even with our Lego sets, we could. Um, we could do some 3D renders for whatever reason. I'm not sure. Now you do the same thing with your galaxy and has the same same camera. Really? All right, we'll turn that off for a moment. All right. So NASA has completed their their coverage. Now this is from Everyday Astronaut. I don't know if we can rebroadcast this one. If anyone else is uh if Rebel Shy. I know definitely with NASA Space Flight we can't. So it's a bit of a uh Bit of a tough one with everyday astronaut and whoever else is uh, is covering these. So no, it is going four miles. So it does have to. It is going to take quite a while to get there. Um, so we'll kind of check back in on that for uh, for a little while. I mean, we, there's still some other things that we can um, that we can be doing. We can check out tonight and. You know, it, it is a, it's amazing to see what is going, what is uh, progressing, how this is, uh, how this is working out. And say, again, this is what I'm trying to tie in with things. Also, for those who are keen on um, in astrophotography, I noticed this little, uh, this little treat on the box art. Uh, you got this bad explosion. The rocket will explode on the pad. I freaking hope not. <laughs> I mean, they've done countless tests. And that's the other thing is that we've seen the tests going um, that they've been doing on here. And we have seen now with what SpaceX does and how we see so much more, I guess, oopses and um, and progression with the with, with the, um, the Falcon Heavy and the Super Heavy and the um, and Starship is that we're seeing all these tested out in real time. And it's not like... You know, we're not seeing like the final version of it. So there have been tests done on the uh, with the boosters for the uh, for SLS, and I am I would love nothing more than for everything to go absolutely um, correct, and hope that nothing does go wrong with them. But again, there is always there's always that that, that worry about it as well. As well, it's um, this is an unmanned an uncrewed mission. Uh, for the first test flight. Uh, SpaceX started when... SpaceX... How, how old is space? SpaceX isn't... Um, isn't that old. Compared to NASA. But they're doing a little bit of different... Um, changing different ambitions for, for space exploration. Two thousand two. Twenty years. That's not a great deal of time then being in the in the space exploration business. But again, how many times were you seeing with um I any any other how many how often did we have like almost uncensored views for tests with NASA? Like it just seems only only in the, the most, most recent um time so we've been able to get this insider look into everything that's going on and that we have this it, it almost feels like these missions take much longer because we are seeing it almost from infancy up until things are launched like James Webb like we were waiting like like so long for Webb to launch uh 100% worth it though not even even more so like it is I am still absolutely floored by this image from Webb. It is incredible. It is better than I thought we were going to see. 
And you know, when they're illustrating with the, you know, look at the, the resolution from Spitzer versus Webb. It's awesome. It is incredible. It is so exciting to, to see this in real time. And the fact that we've had this progression of images from Webb and presented in a different style than we were, I guess, treated with for Hubble. When they're expecting these images to come through for Hubble, they were expecting flawless views right off the bat. So when Hubble needed a pair of glasses to fix everything, it was, um, you know, it was a little disappointing. So I was glad as these images were rolling up from web that they were explicitly labeled as all these test images and um, there's still work to be done. Uh, there's also a difference in funding between NASA and SpaceX. NASA has to fight for funding against all other departments. SpaceX has Musk, Musk throwing money at it. And there is, like, you look at the um, the budget for uh, for NASA. If you, like, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson compared to it. If you used a dollar bill as the entire United States budget, NASA's budget is, was it, two-tenths of one percent. And you weren't you, you could take that a little sliver off the side of that dollar bill and not even get into the ink. And that's NASA's whole budget for the for the year. And it's like what how much they get like what 20, 20 billion dollars or something like that? For like everything that they do. You know, not just for, just for the one mission. Uh Webb was I think originally Webb was gonna was going to be about like seven hundred million dollars was like the original budget for Webb. At launch, it was just over 10 billion US dollars that had gone into it. So, I mean, as Webb was, uh, had been conceived or had been, um, was, was, um, let's use that word perceived, um, until I remember what the other word I was looking for proposed, uh, just shortly after Hubble was launched. And, you know, that was, it was back in the in the nineties, and even then, Webb was probably even was thought up or even earlier than that. So again, it is the um, the time that it takes for all of this, and I'm glad for that delay on Webb that they managed, that they had everything work like flawlessly to this point. Hubble is sixteen billion. Is that um, was that? At the time, or is that accounting for inflation? So there were a couple other images from... Uh, from Webb. That I was looking at. Um, oh, there, okay, there's the, uh, the near-infrared camera alignment selfie. So that's what we have now. Uh, I don't know if I, oh, I think I closed that window of what the uh, that primary selfie looked like before. Uh, it's adjusted. And that's just to orbit NASA government is spending, um, NASA's government is spending a third party, third party purchase. I mean, this is a far cry from what, uh, What did it look like before? There you go. There was the the first primary mirror selfie. And then everything's much more much more aligned. And that's these small little increment, these nanometer increment movements that Webb has been doing over the past uh, few weeks. And there's still more adjustments that need to be done. Uh, their timeline, where is the, uh, there's some infographics here. So there's still the, um, I guess the complete integration of the mirrors. We should be coming at uh, at four months, about approximately four months from launch. 
And they said that it'll be about six months um, when everything is going to be ready to start the scientific missions with Webb. So this is the um, this is all the timeline of what we've been watching from from launch um, back on the twenty fourth of December or sorry on the twenty fifth of December, twenty twenty one. Swooboo, hello, how you doing? Good to see you in here tonight. How are you? How has your week been going? So yes, we have watched the progression of of James Webb Space Telescope, and I just say it has been. It has been very exciting. It has been very nerve wracking. And like I was saying, everything has gone off seemingly without a hitch. Like they have this, you know, they got it down to a science, you know? <laughs> this is rocket surgery we're dealing with. <laughs> uh, we're good to be here. You're actually glad to have you in here. Weekend is starting good. Wonderful. Um, Doing well tonight. We've been watching, we've been keeping an eye on the, uh, the movement of the SLS rocket out to pad 39B. And NASA's coverage has completed for what they wanted to share with us. But this is going to be, is a four mile journey uh, from the from the VAB, from the vehicle assembly building out to the, the pad where they're going to start running some tests. So this could still be another four hours that's going to take them to get to the pad and run, start running those tests. But I just want, I wanted to be able to, to, uh, to jump on and be uh, and talking about everything that we got going on here. So adorable, hello my love. Hello Pookie. How are you? What'd you think of dinner? Was it good? Did you like it? Should we do it again? So we've been watching Watching the rollout of the of SLS, which also why I want to draw more attention to this to this rocket uh, and to this mission to the Artemis mission is a little bit of um, there's Lego sets <laughs> that are inspired by these. So one thing I noticed on the box on the box art for this. I was looking at it, I'm like, oh, cool, they got some, uh... actually, there's a few gripes I have about the packaging. I want to tweet Lego about this. I know, it, okay, I looked at it, and I saw, oh, cool, there's, uh, there's Orion, there's the Orion Nebula, right, where's my, there's my magnifying glass, just going over there. The three stars of Orion, Alnatak, Alnalam, Mintaka. Um, and you have Rigel, Soph. As well as you can see the constellation of Taurus the Bull or the the Hyades. But like I said, he, right here, where my magnifying glass glass lid gets a little lost, is Orion. Or at least the three stars and the feet and the and the sword of Orion. But up here is the belt of Orion again. And the Orion Nebula. And Beetlejuice and Bellatrix. They have just mirrored this image of the Orion constellation on the box art. Hello, Lava Lamp. I 100% agree with you. I agree that this set is um, is ludicrous, ludicrously overpriced. But the thing is that it is um, it comes with the brand of NASA attached to it. And that kind of puts up the price a bit. Um, <clears throat> however, um, it is sorry, not, not that it is what it is, but that's the uh, kind of the price we end up paying. It's like some weird little nerd tax for for us adults. Uh, better, better take off in space for that price. <laughs> it is, I mean, it's cool. And what we want to be doing is, you know, we do want to, we don't want to add this to our collection because every, every set that we do build, we try to keep it as space based as possible. Um, we have our, we have our Apollo lunar lander. We got the, 
um, International Space Station and what else did we got? Oh, we got the um, we have the Space Shuttle Discovery or what's left of it at the moment. I still have to rebuild this thing. Um, we have a little bit of uh, of Hubble that isn't busted up. So, you know, we, we try to keep things as space space as possible. So, which is why we have our goal here, which we have wonderfully already reached our halfway point. We're halfway there to halfway there. Um, and once we, we reach that bit goal, then, you know, we'll pick up the rocket launch center. Like, you know, it's I go halvesies. Chat goes halvesies on that. We all have fun building this rocket launch. I have a bunch of cool ideas that we have for the builds. As ever, as always, there is always some kind of um, mixture of the, the, the current set that we're building into the channel. You had a pretty big space shuttle uh, Lego Technic set when you were a kid. It cost less than half the small Lego kit. I mean, that is, it's, you know, it's, it's 1,110 pieces, but it, it's the... The fact that we have NASA attached to it, but even then, the Saturn V rocket was 1,969 pieces and still cost less. Another thing on the box art is, now it can be argued that maybe because the moon is so bright, it looks like the clouds are behind. Now, I want to say it looks like the clouds are behind the moon, indicating that the moon is within our own atmosphere. I will pick these boxes apart, Lego. I am not afraid. Come at me. <laughs> uh, not only if you can post links, but you found it on Amazon for scalper prices. Really? Oh, sorry. Uh, dear Lego, I was perusing the box art of your rocket launch center, and to my horror, <laughs> my horror, I noticed you had placed Beetlejuice in the Pleiades and Vega in the wrong area. And... <laughs> And to my further anger, you repeated Orion. Yes, that is exactly how it would go. Uh, once you started playing with your Lego rocket, you will go to a whole new world. Um, and Chris, yes, I did hear about the, uh, the earthquake out in Japan. Hopefully there is. I didn't hear of any tsunami warnings. So that is that's good to hear. What do we got for that? Ooh. Oh my goodness. That was the Lego. That was the Lego Technic set. That is actually very similarly shaped to everything that this whole set is, uh, is right now. That's interesting. Uh, sorry for the last message. What was that? Um, and I see. No, no, no worries. It's all good. Uh, Lego manager response. He's right. Give them all the space related kits at once. <laughs> just, just, just shut them up. Uh, a lot of moving parts, flaps and cargo bay with the arm inside. Oh, dang, that looks really cool. Um, 995 pounds. Converted to Canadian. You're looking at almost like 1700 bucks. Maybe even more. You have to figure tax. You only got $3,000. <laughs> you pretty much two grand for this set. Man, but that is that is really cool though. I wonder if they still if the boosters were um, were the same pieces. Maybe maybe not, because these boosters use the uh, oops users use boosters used the buckets. <laughs> Flaps, stop it! No, we're no, we're all we're all fifteen years old. That's fine. Uh, Headscope Games, what's going on, Headscope? How are you doing? 
<laughs> How are you doing today? Uh, 1600 Canadian. And that's before tax. Add 13% for Ontario. Uh, nozzles were kind of hollow, had a fiber optic plastic in orange for the fire effect. Oh, man, that's really cool. You know when it's like, okay. Oh, Harbert. Get in the beard. Get in the beard. Take refuge. Uh, Welsh, boy, you're going you're gonna to head out. No worries. Good to see you today. Thank you so much for joining in. Have a very good, have a very, very good evening. Look forward to seeing you again soon. $1,871.98 for that. Boy. I don't know. I don't feel I'm that kind of Lego collector at the moment. As cool as this one is. Uh, do I know Lego robots? Well, not personally. Just find all, yeah, there you go, print it. Print it, 3D print that thing. One off uh, eBay at 95 pounds right now. Okay, well, how much is missing if it's 90, if they want only 95 pounds on eBay? Uh, what are we watching today? Headscope, we were we were checking out the, um, the rollout of the SLS rocket, um, which has kind of gone that way. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you got to thread your new spool. Ooh, what kind of spool did you get? What is, or maybe when you come back, I'll ask a question of what is the most, um, what is the most, um, I don't want to say the easiest, the most satisfying material to work with when you're 3D printing. And why? PLA. What does PLA stand for? So we were checking out the... Uh... Oh, there we go. Now they're, now they're moving the camera over. So this whole uh, unit moves at one mile per hour. So to get that rocket from the vehicle assembly building out to the, uh, out to the launch pad. Uh, you play Minecraft and uh, you play, just play Minecraft Tech Launcher. Now, not that I, I directly want to compare um, Minecraft to Lego, but I mean, you are using this, the uh, the same idea of single blocks amassed to make a uh, awesome sculptures. And I, some of the things that people do um, within Minecraft is absolutely amazing. The structures that people build. Uh, it stands for plastic, of course. What's going on, Ariana? How you doing? Uh, PLA is is polylactic acid. Like the lactic acid that builds up in our muscles, causing that burning sensation when you work out, you know, if you're like completely jacked. <laughs> you actually have no idea what it stands for, but you know what? If you say it with enough conviction, people will believe you. How you doing, Ariana? Good to see you in today. I uh, probably can't. PLA is easy. PTEG or uh, PETG is good for watertight. ABS is strong in high heat. ASA is the same as ABS with UV resistance. PLA is like retracted polyester. They have a... Uh, they had a bug on their lens. Um, a, it's a math machine uh, with uh, Minecraft. I played a little bit of Minecraft. I tried getting into it with some, with some friends, but I couldn't join their server through Xbox. There was some issue and it didn't have it on PC and it was a bit of a, a bit of a pain. So I just kind of dug as far down as I could go. Got an achievement for um, smashing like a 10,000 blocks 
And then that was it. <laughs> Moved on to a new game. Uh, and then from there, you get to nylons and polycarb. See, I got the I have a polycarb plate on my keyboard. That's about it. <laughs> uh, eleven thousand eleven thousand playtime in some games. That's some dedication to the games. Although sometimes you can play games and you get completely lost in them, and it is fantastic. And then you're like, oh well, I've missed lunch and dinner and now breakfast. I guess I should probably stand up and, and, and pee after playing the game that long. But uh, it's, um, and I could even, I had a, my, my character in in Minecraft, it looked like me with a big beard and everything, but it wouldn't show up in my, in, um, on my friend's server. So I was like, no, oh, what's the point? I just look like Steve or whoever it is. Uh, you have uh, NASA robots in uh, Minecraft Tech Launcher. So is that like a separate thing? Like, I know there's like, what is it? There's like Minecraft Java. So is Tech Launcher another uh, different version? Sounds kind of interesting. Would that be where you build structures that actually move? It's interesting. Third party. I will... Uh, I'll ask some other people about that, see if they've gotten into it. Um, see if we can see what that's all about. That's, that sounds pretty cool. It's very interesting. So we are checking out the uh, the rollout, rolling out to pad 39B with the SLS. And like I said, there is the, the other way of marrying this in with things to make sure that we are going to be getting the rocket launch center. Now, it's not just limited to the Rocket Launch Center because there are other sets that we'll be looking at down the line um, relating to the Artemis mission. However, this is a brand new set that was just released on the 1st of March. So I am not fussed about these sets going into retirement anytime soon. However, um, with the fact of the, the uh, current launch of the SLS coming up, would like to be able to um, to add this into our collection sooner than like the lunar missions. Uh, it makes you sad they trash the engines. It would be if they could have had them boost and land back, much like SpaceX. That would be great. Um, but if if there's any chance of the uh, a good amount of recovery from some of the uh, items from the rocket, that'd be great. Obviously, reusability is a huge... is a huge selling point with um, everything from SpaceX. So hopefully, future missions beyond Artemis, beyond the SLS, NASA could maybe get into using um, more ideas on there. Uh, more, more utilization of reusable uh, parts on there. Uh, will this VOD get uploaded to YouTube soon? Um, yes, it will no sooner than 24 hours after it finishes. That is the uh, that is the the deal that you have to do with um, when you you know Twitch gets the 24 hour rights for my for my VODs. Also, I've, but the thing is, I've noticed that my VODs have been disappearing really quick, and that I also need to remember later tonight to upload the um, the birthday subathon to YouTube as well to save that. So that's the uh, thing. Uh, Skyrim for me. Are you still playing Skyrim? You started on 2 p.m. Monday. Yeah, why? And that's a weird, weird way to say that. It's 10 a.m., so it's Friday. Oh, just let me finish this cave. What the, <laughs> what's that over there? I... I think Skyrim is available on the Xbox Ultimate Game Pass, and I had asked my brother about it, and I said, should I play Skyrim? And he says, yes, only if you feel that you need to um, alienate yourself from the entire family and divorce your wife. So uh, if Mrs. Canuck is listening, I probably won't be playing Skyrim. Um, I mean, actually, there's, there's tons of other... Um, of other space-based games that I do want to be playing. 
uh, Skyrim 4K graphics mods. They, I've, I've seen some screenshots and I've seen some gameplay of it. It just looks so nice. <laughs> uh, does anyone have info on the launch profile of the SLS? How close to orbit do those engines get? Um, there is... There is this little tidbit here. Now I'll put the link in chat because we won't go through like the entire, actually let's go over um, for more information on the SLS mission. Right now they're aiming for no earlier than May, 2022. I want to say it was like May 20th. But then again, maybe we just looked at the 2022. Um, so, Lars, <laughs> so how long did it take you to rebuild the, um, the space shuttle? Because at the moment, I am I I am still at that point of where um, of, of when I picked everything up. So in this video, it does illustrate what the um, what path it's going to take. And that is the um, the emergency abort system. Which after once it's once it's starting to attain orbit, it does get uh, jettisoned. And then we're just left with the uh, the Orion capsule that will be sent out. Uh, second time is about eight hours. Third time, about six. Uh, pretty early roll rollout. Well, they're gonna they're gonna roll it out, and they're gonna do some tests, and they'll take it back in, can't make any modifications they have to ahead of the launch, and then we will keep an eye on that launch coverage. So it still wouldn't attain orbit. They're still gonna come back. But they aim to uh, to land back in the ocean, based off of their uh, their trajectories. But then again, there's still also little bits of space junk that do that does go flying around, which is um, as <laughs> that worked out well. Um. So yes, Orion is going to head over to the, the moon. It'll do, I think it does one orbit around the moon and then they will send it back to Earth. And that is the... Um, those are satellites that they're launching out of the... Uh, out of Orion that will orbit the moon. Uh, molten PLA, burnt your finger. Uh... So no, you're saying it's unsafe. Um, now I didn't know this wasn't a burn. But I got a boo-boo. It went deep. It's my own thumb. It's ridiculous. Uh just finished finished threading the spool. Is it all good though? Uh, it makes you wonder if they could be uh, scooped up by a BFR for recovery. They probably, I mean, there should be some amount of recovery with these because that is a that's a great deal of uh, of waste, space junk to be leaving in the ocean. Uh, sadly, time for you to curl up in your boot. No worries, Lars. Have a good rest. Wonderful to see you in here as always, my friend. I figured it was. Um, a good time to kind of catch up on. Uh, thanks for spamming the DeLorean, by the way, as if your wallet wasn't empty enough. I know. I know. Oh, my goodness. That's another thing I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to talk about. Uh, it's. The fact that. There is the three in one creator of the DeLorean. This was just announced today. 
where you can build either the one from Back to the Future 1, 2, or 3. And, oh my goodness. Is this an amazing looking set. So much better than the Kuso, than the Kusu uh, set, the original ideas. Uh, Issa Rocket's better, uh, better in 2030. It is... Um, I do like the look of the Aryan of the Aryan Five rockets. They look really cool. This is this one is two hundred and nineteen dollars Canadian for one thousand eight hundred and seventy two pieces. That uh, ESA Mars launch has been scrubbed. When was this? This one th this set comes out on the first of April. At least that's what it's scheduled for on the uh, on Lego's website. So this is uh, there were there are rumors about it. There are people talking about it. Um, two, <gasps> pardon me, two hundred ninety dollars. We got about three of them. I know, I know. <laughs> Head scope. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome you into the observatory. For those of you who are new to the channel, who am I? I am Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. Usually we are taking live images of outer space, but we also like to cover any kind of space exploration launches when it is very pivotable. P pivotable? It's a word now. Pivotable is now a word. <laughs> when it is pivotal in space exploration. <laughs> Hello, Tom Knot. But yes, we usually like to take images of outer space, um, galaxies, star clusters, nebulae, and this is my backyard. It's actually looking kind of decent outside. Uh, we're a room of astrophysicists. I mean, it is, I, I love astronomy. I love talking about it. I can go on about astronomy all day long. Um, I'll break it up with some bits of, of Lego and, and rocket launches. But um, this is this is the latest announcement from Lego. I can't see, this is not a day one purchase for me. It is an eventual purchase and I mean because we like our we like our nerdy geeky things on here you know we have our we have our infinity gauntlet we have a lot of little Star Wars Lego sets we have the scout trooper helmet uh, since it's uh, smaller than the original it doesn't need uh, less power to get the 88 miles per hour what would the scale speed of that be? Does it only need to get up to like maybe 30 some odd miles per hour? And that's the equivalent. Agony is eating ghost pepper peanuts and finding you have a paper cut on a fingertip. Ugh. No. Agony is when is when chat is very kind and you have a bunch of ghost pepper peanuts in your hand and you eat them throughout the stream and then forget when you go to the bathroom following the stream. Everything burns. <laughs> 88 inches per hour. <laughs> uh, Andy, you're going to head off as well. No worries. Good to see you in here. Glad to have you in with us today. Uh, the other parts of your brains are psychology and computers, not always applicable here. Sometimes, you never know, but like we go we go off on some really weird tangents sometimes. Uh, wonderfully weird tangents, uh, really. You know, I gotta say it's um We have astronomy at the heart of everything, but you, you guys also know and those who are quick to learn that, um, yeah, I'm happy to go off topic and we'll just kind of, we'll check things out on something else now and then. Uh, normal like that SLS at the moment. Oh, for the, uh, comparing the, the sizes of the, um, Of the scale models. Although, can you could you get could you get a Lego set up to eighty eight miles an hour? 
time travel is an interesting thing to think about. It, it it's sometimes it can almost it can almost make sense. Going forward in time, th- seems much more, um, I guess feasible than going back in time. Um, the ring of fire, um, <laughs> the the ring of fire, the um, the tongue of fire, the rod of fire. It's uh, all the fire. The DeLorean set come is set to uh, be released in May. No, May. No, April. The like first of April it's supposed to come out, I believe. Um, let's see. It is, yeah. There we go. First of April. I uh, saw first picks from the JWST. Is there any processing they can do to remove that the six pointed starburst effect from? I uh, assume the hexagonal mirror segments. Now it is still a telescope alignment evaluation image. Um, those spikes may be prevalent on bright stars. Very similar to when we are looking at certain targets, we will get uh, our diffraction spikes because our mirror, our primary, our secondary mirror sits at the front and is held in place by, <coughs> pardon me, um, with these spider veins. So you can get the, the diffraction spikes on some of the, the brighter, closer stars, essentially. But we don't always focus on stars with the reflector telescopes. So it's not always going to be looking directly at those targets. So if we're looking at the uh, at the needle galaxy, a lot of the stars in our image are actually still fairly dim that you barely get any of the diffraction spikes. And because Webb is going to be looking not so much at stars, but it's going to be taking more deep space object, uh, deep space images. Um, and that's the stars aren't going to make as much of an impact as they are. They use this star um, HD HD84406 as their, essentially their, um, their calibration star. Are you looking forward to tomorrow? Cause the Mario Kart DLC is out. Ooh, which Mario Kart are they up to now? Or is it just kind of based off of the switch? I, pl- we used to play Mario Kart. Like I am super Mario Kart, like Mario Kart 64 generation. No, so we, we've seen them all. They're still fun as hell. What's going on, Death? How you doing? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, so theoretically, it's a, a fork of prob- probability in which every possible route is nullified. Uh, what's left are the routes that don't work. Uh, there was I was reading about um, they're talking about uh, quantum physics and how oh, I'd have to I'd have to listen to the chapter again, but saying how like every um, every possibility occurs all at once until the waveform collapses. And that's your outcome, that everything else disappears. Um, also, getting into the Schrodinger's cat. Uh, that's what, I want to listen to that um, that that portion of the, my book again, because that is, uh, it blew my mind, but at the same time, the way how they broke it down into the digestible um, little bits was, little bits, was great. Hello, Uncle Bill, how you doing? Uh, the seams between the segments will create those spikes. Our photography is used etched glass for the same effect. It's a fixed effect that can be characterized so that final data is clean. How you doing, Uncle Bill? Good to see you tonight. Uh, your reaction time in Mario is uh, is about how soon can I curse after hitting something? Or when you go for, you try and get two of the, the blocks, so you get both of the, the power-ups and you miss it, or someone else just gets in front of you ahead of time, it's like, F- them. Get out of my way. Uh, that diffraction pattern will still be there, perhaps less noticeable in a spread out galaxy, but still affecting the uh, the data, surely. Um, I mean, it's. I mean, I, I can't really compare what we're using to Webb. Um, our telescope is of the same nature as the Hubble Space Telescope, the same design of the primary mirror with the uh, reflecting the secondary mirror. But even something like something like this one. 
and even with looking at Webb's image, um, like even behind the diffraction spike, behind the starlight, there are still, still galaxies that can be seen. You know, it is like, I wouldn't even say that that's data loss. They can still um, get measurements from some of the distant fuzzies behind it. And again, everything in this image, this obviously, this is a star that they're focusing on in Ursa Major. But of the few other stars that are in this image, we get more galaxies, more of these little smudges, these these uh, these blobs, or galaxies millions of light years away. And that is what is truly amazing from what we're getting out of Webb already in essentially these uh, these calibration images. Uh, it looks at JWST images. Ooh, look, there's the, look at the galaxies. There's Virgo A and Andromeda and the Canis Major Dwarf. And what the hell is that? Seems like a... It's just it is it is amazing what what has been already and like this is our this is like my favorite section of this uh, of these galaxies a double barred spiral galaxy spiral galaxy uh, possibly an elliptical galaxy Hello, and the kids it is an astronaut Tim P ask me a question uh, how long do you think that ISS and Hubble have a lifespan left Hubble is there isn't a lot of time left with the Hubble Space Telescope. They're trying to stretch it out for a little while longer. Um, but it is coming to the end of its serviceable life. And it was, and even then, Hubble's mission has gone on much longer than uh, than anticipated. Uh, International Space Station, another talking about, was it 20, was it 2035? Uh, the waveform collapses because of experience uh, slash observation. All things are possible, including all routes. A ball on a pool table will take, but after you strike the cue, it could not follow for the, uh, the white ball to come straight at you. The casualty would be broken because the waveform collapsed. And it's the... It was... I, I want to, like I said, I want to go back and re-listen to that chapter and better formulate my, um, my thoughts and um, not so much opinion, but just... Um, disseminating the information out of that uh, of that chapter because it's it's it is ridiculously interesting and it sounds um, like like more so complicated than um, than I am aware of. Uh, turn Hubble around, make it a spy satellite. There are plenty of other. Oh my goodness! Okay, to to clarify. Earlier on in the stream, we did have a uh, a bit of the of the worst world's worst cereal, actually the uh, the galaxy's worst bowl of the galaxy's worst cereal, mixing uh, Mister Payne with a little bit of the moon cheese bites. It is still it's still biting. Every now and then, it still takes a little bit of a it still gives a little bit of a hit. Uh, by the way, Tim Peak was amazing last week. Oh yes, you're saying you went to see. You're going to see Tim Peak. That was, a, I was that's incredible. How long of a session did uh, did he do? Uh, from your perspective, the waveform collapsed to someone else. You and the pool balls are entangled. See, you know, here's where it, it's. That is depending on the observer, that you're getting different data. I, and no, that's. It's going way too. Uh, Hubble has failing gyros. Uh, if you recall, one is still functional and the other two have failed. And once that's it, then there's not much else that can be done with, uh, with Hubble. However, it is, um, I mean, the time that we got with Hubble and the fact that when I was watching a documentary of on Hubble and it was talking about the first launch of Webb as being the successor. And that was about, um, that was like back in 2012, I think that, or 2015 was the documentary, or even sooner, or earlier. But the fact that they, they've, they've made, 
Hubble lasts that much longer. The fact that Webb is going to, its mission can be stretched out that much longer because of the, um, the efficiency of the launch is incredible at how much fuel is saved. Uh, so what you're saying is two balls, one stick. Wait, no, not that one. No, hang on. There we go. <laughs> Wait, it's too much. It's too much face. <laughs> uh, you saw Tim Spe Tim Peak speak. Tim speak at the conference of 2017. Didn't stick around long. Uh, Mr. Payne, hey Tom, remember eating me? Here's a reminder. It just. Excuse me. I dropped my wrist rest. Uh, the CIA did give NASA a Hubble class spy satellite. A uh, Hubble class spy telescope years ago has been nothing but hassle from the intelligence community about getting permission to deploy it ever since. Uh, he's a fascinating guy. I mean, it's uh, like. You know, the Redeem that you did, uh, Andy, that you did, um, you did Redeem. You can pick a number and we do, we will read a question out of the book and just getting insight into everything that Tim Peake has done. And I imagine there are still like books from, uh, from Chris Hadfield or Scott Kelly and any other information from those, from those gentlemen would be just as interesting as well. Um, like I got this book while I was living in the UK, um, to be fair, uh, I probably still have to, like, it was loaned to me by a friend, whether or not she still knows I have it, but I'm getting good use out of it. If anything, is that not the purpose of loaning someone a book that they get the, the most enjoyment out of this as possible? You gave your presentation about Hubble in uh, undergraduate physics, in particular, a mis misconfigured interferometer used to test and figure the mirror. How'd that go? Sounds very interesting. But yes, uh, that Mr. Payne still, it still resonates. So, which is why I had that, I had that threshold. It is, um, it is at least, it is 15, it, essentially it should be 1500 bits exactly for Mr. Payne. Um, but there was a very generous bit donation. Um, and I felt, that maybe a little bit Mr. Payne was in a thankful, celebratory mood. Three D printers back up and calibrated. Excellent. What are you, or can you say what you're working toward right now? Let me get that realigned up there. Uh, was there anything you wanted to do to test? Um, I, I, I wouldn't know. A life-sized bear paw. Uh, if you recall, they had some less precise instruments telling them the mirror was out, but they disregarded that since the more precise instruments said everything was just dandy and no one thought to double check. Uh, Death, you got an A for it. Excellent. A for excellent. I uh, can go for a page in Tim's book. Yes, Andy, do you want to, um, you have any number you want to pick or do you want me just to kind of flip and choose a question? Or if you say page 192, then that's a, a good one to read. I have, I have bare arms up to uh, midway up my biceps. And then that's what as bare as my arms get. <laughs> hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. 69's, 69 has been, has been many times claimed. That was claimed by Matei. 
that was like one of the as soon as I started um, numbering the pages actually if you want I can go over to page 68 and go do it'll be it's like it's like a 69 but they they owe you what do astronauts do when not in space uh, correction, it was the NRO that said two spy sats, and there was 20 years ago. We still can't get approval to use them, even though the tech was was declassified already. So they're still sitting up there without being in, without being utilized. Sounds like classic government-y stuff. So what do astronauts do when not in space? Following completion of basic astronaut training, my first task was to head to the ISS Mission Control Center in Munich and qualify as, as a Eurocom. The role of a Eurocom is to be the person who talks to the astronauts in the space station. You are the voice link between the ISS and the ground teams responsible. Ground teams responsible for consolidating all the information that is coming from a myriad of sources on the ground and putting it into clear, concise instructions for the crew. It's one of the most valuable jobs in preparing you for life aboard the space station, which what is it really like. This training took several weeks, but on completion, I was proud to be a part of the close-knit mission control team that supports daily operations on board the ISS. During this pre-assignment phase, I was also fortunate to be the first European astronaut selected for a NEMO mission with NASA. NEMO, NASA's Extreme Environments Mission Operations, involves working with an extraordinary group of scientists, engineers, and other astronauts. I like to think of NEMO as the special forces of NASA's human spaceflight team a small group of innovative experts who are developing the technologies and systems for future space exploration missions. I was assigned to the 16th NEMO mission with the objective of develop developing the tools, techniques, and procedures that would be required for a future mission to an asteroid. The extreme environment part of NEMO itself, or sorry, NEMO lends itself to the fact that these, these missions are conducted underwater, about 20 meters underwater in fact. To achieve our objective, I and five other crew members plan to live underwater for 12 days, conducting diving expeditions each day from the sanctuary of our marine habitat, Aquarius. This research station lies nearly six kilometers off Florida's Key Largo. Con uh, this research station lies nearly six kilometers off Florida's Key Largo coastline, anchored to the ink to the ocean floor, and is ideally suited to simulate space missions for several reasons. First. It is a very confined environment with just enough room to support six crew members in fairly cramped conditions. It makes the ISS look positively luxurious. Second, there is real risk involved. When we breathe air underwater, the increased pressure causes nitrogen to be dissolved into our bloodstream and transported into our body tissues. Do this for any length of time and our body tissues become saturated with nitrogen than they would otherwise have on the earth. Or sorry, have on the surface. In a sense, a body saturated with nitrogen is a bit like a shaken up fizzy drink. There's a lot of dissolved gas trapped in there, but everything is fine so long as no one takes the cap off. When diving, coming to the surface rapidly is akin to taking the cap off. A swift reduction in the ambient pressure releases the excess gas in an explosion of bubbles. This is, fu this is fun to do with a fizzy drink, but not so much fun in the human body. As bubbles are released into the tissue and the bloodstream, symptoms can vary from itching and pain to paralysis and even death. And so, during our 12-day mission underwater, we did not have the option of a quick return to the surface if something went wrong. In fact, in order to release the dissolved gas safely, we needed to gradually decompress over a period of 18 hours. Not helpful if there was a fire in the habitat or a drowning incident during one of our dives. This element of risk is something that all astronauts must deal with in their career. The space station is an environment where the decisions have real consequences for the safety of the crew, and training exercises, exercises such as NEMO provide excellent simulation of the space mission. However, the most important reason for going underwater was to use the neutral buoyancy that water offers to simulate weightlessness whilst we can use a swimming pool for some of this research and frequently do, the ocean allows us to experiment with large pieces of equipment such as deep water submersibles which can simulate space exploration vehicles. As always, I love the information that comes out of uh, the insight to day-to-day day-to-day -day lives lone mountain knife what's going on how are you doing 
Good to see you in here. All right, Andy, in goes your name into the book. For all time or until the uh, the sun engulfs the earth. But thank you very much for that. <laughs> uh, the spy satellites were never launched, but uh, many plans to adapt them for science, getting approval to deploy them anywhere on Earth's neighborhood. Even L1 or L2 has been the problem. Meanwhile, we really need decent visible light scope in space. JWST was intended to overlap with Hubble's lifespan so the data could be combined. But... Web came so late that it was um, that there's very, very little overlap. Uh, the bends from diving are bad. I've always heard like horror stories about the bends. Lone Mountain Knife, how you doing? Good to see you in here. Glad to have you been with us today. You guys want to check out some cool action within the forge? Go check out, go check out Lone Mountain Knife Co. Uh, it is a good day. It is. Um, well, we were watching the the rollout of the of NASA's SLS for um, preparing the the tests for Phase One of the Artemis mission. Uh, right now, uh, it is well, it is currently. Uh, 7.55 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time down at Kennedy Space Center. So it is, uh, it's getting dark out. Uh, Andy, you're welcome. You're most welcome. Thank you for, uh, for the redeem and always good to, um, to be able to look in, get some insight into Tim Peak. And eventually, one day, we will fill it up with every single name of the contributors to that book. And it'll be at least triple the, the thickness of what it was when we first started. Put water in a vacuum chamber, you will understand nitrogen and narcosis. It's always interesting seeing um, when you can take, you you know, you remove the atmospheric pressure out of, uh, in, in the vacuum chamber and just watching how much things expand, how much, um, how much our atmosphere actually keeps things in check. Which is also very interesting. Like you, like you take the 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 air out of a chamber with a marshmallow, um, and just you see how much space it'll take up. And when you talk about like they talk about like um you know how water boils at like hundred degrees Celsius, and that's assuming you're living at sea level. You're living at one atmosphere. You go higher into the atmosphere, it it it, it takes less time to less temperature to boil the water. Because there's water, less water, 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 water. <laughs> Speaking water, of water, 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 water. This the water, 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 water. Uh, nitrogen narcosis and the bends are two different things. How are they? As I say, nitrogen narcosis is different than necrosis. Hey, you're very excited to watch the SLS launch for you. A spacecraft can completely escape the Earth is another notch up the awesome scale. And just, I mean, the fact of, that it is aiming to go to return to the moon. Like, it isn't um, what has been done with, with James Webb. It wasn't been doing with Starlink satellites. That it is... Um, that we are sending humans back to the moon. Like it is no longer just a satellite that is going up there. It isn't a, a small crew on the, on the crew dragon going to the international space station. Um, that this is going back to our, our nearest low density satellite to essentially aim to set up shop. Um, and there is, you know, the, um, with the, with the, Three D, get in there. Okay. Enjoy the time in the beard. Enjoy. So there is, there's more sets to deal to do with uh, based off of the Artemis um, concept uh, for the missions. So yes, there are going to be more. Um, 
more sets that we're going to add on. And I really got to think about where we're going to put these as well. So we'll kind of keep an eye on uh, what we'll be doing with those. So yes, uh, I, I am excited for the for the space exploration. I'm excited to tie in as much of this as possible with um, with all facets of what we do for our streams uh, with our Sunday mornings for dedicated to our lazy Lego days. Um, of which one more time, we will remind everybody that next that this coming weekend, uh, we'll have a stream tomorrow night, a little bit of a it'll be our astronomy chat, but I think we'll try to work in a couple of different uh, elements to the stream and maybe even a little bit of a preview for what we're going to be doing for our, our next Lazy Sunday Lego. Now, like I said, uh, this Saturday and Sunday, um, I'm going to be back in the old hometown where you have our we have my, my dad's memorial service. So, you know, streams will be uh, postponed until uh, later next week. Sunday evening, when I'm back, there is the possibility that we will have some clear skies. And it is like it's clear skies for, for the entire evening. So expect if everything works out, I will keep you everybody updated um, on the way back if we're going to be uh, streaming because right now we got a little bit of there's like a little bit of cloud coverage but at the same time it's um, it might be fooling us because let me see what there our forecast says that maybe if we do Now we have like this this tiny little window of a of of not too bad skies uh, at about at about eight. No, sorry, my goodness, that's not eight. That's ten o'clock, and then we possibly have some more clouds come in. So that is uh, that's our our area that we're looking at in central Ontario. To see what kind of cloud coverage we're dealing with um a lot of the apps are saying no this one is saying possibly so i'll keep an eye on the weather even if we do kind of fire up the scope and just start to get some more data on uh, m106 which is um i think i have close to i think i probably got close to maybe nine hours on this galaxy so we'll see how that's uh, gonna turn out What's the red spot? Um, red spot. When you hover your mouse over the over the screen, that red spot. There is a channel point called what is that? That is uh, that'll activate the um, the heat map where you guys can actually click on the screen. So if we are looking at something like the uh, at the galaxy, and there is something else in the image, say like this little smudgy that you guys want to have uh, a little more question about, then you can click on the screen. Uh, nitrogen narcosis is also known as rapture of the deep, a, a potentially intoxicating effect which gets which the in which the diver will swim deeper and deeper as he or she gets more drunk. Uh, the bends when you decompress. Oh, in the camera. Oh, sorry. In the camera outside. That is, that's one of the cell phone towers. And pretty much only visible in the, in the winter. Because once the trees start to, once their leaves start to, to flourish, it is blocked out. And some cell phone signals in the house do diminish a tiny bit. Now, I was kind of hoping that we would see maybe a little bit of wildlife action. Uh, there have been some coyotes that have shown up, and there's a family of deer that comes through the backyard every now and then. But yeah, right now, um, we'll keep an eye on the weather and see how it's going to play out. <laughs> yeah, wildlife action like that. <laughs> Not that kind of action. What's going on, Ant? How you doing? 
How are you today? Uh, great stopping by for the gym. Nice. Get your swole on, sir. Good to see you in here. <laughs> I appreciate it. Always good to see you in here. And if you guys want to uh, go check out Ant, go check out Alpha Ant X. Some good times in there. Good times on his stream. Wonderful dude. Go hang out with him. Say hello. Tell him Astro sent you. He'll say. He'll say that. He'll just scream like a goat. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, a squirrel with a red LED. <laughs> I wonder. See, I've never used my scope as a terrestrial scope before. I wonder what we could see with that. It'd be interesting. Yes, hopefully we get, uh, like I said, I'll keep an eye on the skies. If it is going to be, see, because we're, it's, the weather can, the weather I've noticed has changed so quick. And if we're able to get some more images, then I will, I'll do some more, uh, put some more time on M106. Then that way, when we come back with our regular rainy day astronomy, we'll have a few hours on that target that we can do a little more. Get some more detail out of it because I've been imaging it in broadband, which is what we're seeing here. But I've also imaged it in uh, in narrowband, where we can um, we can see more of the pink for the hydrogen alpha targets in there. So I'll keep an eye on the uh, on the skies. Uh, is there a story behind the goats? Yes, there is. When we were first viewing the place. The previous owners had cows and they had goats and some other animals. Well, there's more goats than anything. And that goat was just doing goat things. <laughs> we thought it was so hilarious the way how it just sounded like it was screaming. So that goat was a previous resident on the property. Um, Actually, we kind of look out just 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 behind which hand am I using this one here behind the greenhouse just behind there was the goat shed. And that's where they lived. The goat shed is no more. We're uh, we kind of made some space back there to have a, a large compost area so that we can uh, keep it out of sight, but also do what we can to liven up the soil as best as possible. Uh, random fact, astronomy optical software has been adapted to, de to de-censor the blurring of some internet content. Uh, better a red LED than a scroll with a red dot scope sniper rifle. The, squ <laughs> the squirrel's like, I want to get that. I'm going to get that scope. Um, wait, how do you mean adapted to desensor blurring of internet content? Wait, hang on, are, are we memeing here? Oh, with the um, animals. <laughs> we don't have those kind of animals back here. At least I haven't seen that. I w at most I saw a whole bunch of flies on the on the telescope today, so maybe maybe they're trying to tell me something. Uh some goats sound eerily similar to crying children. Your brother's neighbor had one. And but foxes as well sound like uh like screaming kids too. I mean, like, I heard, okay, we were out in, um, a few years back, a few years ago, we were, uh, myself and, uh, Mrs. Canuck and, uh, Mrs. Canuck-in-law, we were, we were out in Scotland and there was, there were, there were a bunch of sheep 
there was one sheep that was walking along the hill and we were near uh, near Hadrian's wall. It was very beautiful. It was wonderful. And there was a there were like herds of sheep all around. They would all run away if you started to get close to them and want to take a picture. Um, one of them said, no pictures, no pictures. But there was a sheep walking and was going... <coughs> It was coughing like a person. It was, it did my nut in. Uh, some might sound exactly like screaming men. Wait. <laughs> but yes, it was really weird to do, to look at a sheep and hear it just going. <coughs> <coughs> no, should be like <coughs> something else, something sounding more like a sheep. Like, <laughs> something? Anything? Like, no, it sounded like just a regular person coughing. Um, and we got the out of Scotland so fast. She's a wolf in mouse clothing. Ah! The mouse's <laughs> ghostly howl stakes claim to have. <laughs> Tom, that sheep has a smoker's cough. <coughs> Have you got any more wool, son? Are you cold? I got some wool for you. I can make you a sweater. Nature is weird. <laughs> She's a wolf in mouse clothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where would we be without the internet? Well, we wouldn't have this one. Legs, look at her. Oh, I am looking at her. Stop looking at her. You, you just told me to look at her. Where what would we do? We have world peace, but a little less laughter, I bet. Uh, meme that it pisses you off. The meme actually makes it very hard to find the actual grasshopper mouse howl. Twitter is a Gary place. Like I try to tread very lightly on uh, on Twitter, and most like what, what I find very strange about Twitter sometimes is the weirdest things will blow up. Where I just just because of the uh, maybe it was the timing of putting out this tweet of just reminding people that this Lego Ideas set could be possible. And it was like one of the most uh, engaged with tweets I've had in, in weeks. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, Andy, you're asking about had I seen the um, Among the Stars? I no, I can't say I have. Uh, the literal definition of a cesspool is a pit. That's a septic tank without a cycle. Sometimes, yes, Twitter does feel like that. But I try to keep it as light as possible. <laughs> so just just so just throws him in the hole. But if we can, if we can get this set, this would be so good. This would be so cool. Like it is it looks like it would be a hefty set as well. Well worth it. Easily, I'm pretty sure it would probably be like maybe like three hundred. 300 bucks. The, the, the sheer size of this one. But yeah, so, um. Ooh. Now, I don't always click on these. Could have, could have been the world's largest potato. Then Guinness weighed in. Well. It doesn't look like a potato on there. It looks like a. It looks like a. giant turd on a wagon <laughs> I 
Uh, James Webb Lego set is a, a weird cash grab. Yeah, we'll have my money. <laughs> They'll take my money. It's just the all the inner workings that they uh, that they put on this as well. The going over to, over to the Lego Ideas website, um, there's some really cool really cool things that people have created, and then there are other ones. that's just um, well, I can't see that being a, a being a finished set, but stranger things have happened, and and there have been stranger things sets, but that's a totally different genre of TV that I just never could get into. I wanted to, but it just never uh, it didn't capture my attention as as uh, as much as I thought. All right, well, it looks like um, everybody has possibly ended. We can't really check out. That's about it. That's all I can show from. <laughs> I should probably even be doing that. But okay, so NASA space flight. If we, if y'all do want to uh, catch some more information, uh, some watch more of the uh, the rollout, you can check out NASA space flight. Um, I will drop there. Their YouTube link in there. We can't watch it on stream, but you know, if you want to check them out, um, Dos Valdez is uh, the also through the uh, the Twitter, not Twitter, the Twitch account that um, feeds through NASA Spaceflight as well. I still can't help but think they could have uh, done that for far less than ten billion, for probably five million max. I get it's the. It was the contract that was awarded, and they weren't getting out of it. Before it enjoys another fresh kill, the mouse proclaims its territory. By howling. The mouse throws its head back and lets out a high-pitched cry into the night sky. Oh. Oh, it's so it cute. The name of Werewolf Mouse. Oh. That's so cute. Dang it, nature. Nature can be so scary and so adorable at the same time. I love it. I right, gotta go do adulting stuff. Have a good rest of the stream. No worries, Hobbit. No worries. Actually, I think we are going to um, we're going to wrap things up as well tonight. We're going to um, ease up on things, and uh, like I said, we'll be back tomorrow evening. Tomorrow, we're starting at about uh, six thirty, seven p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And we'll be back with astronomy chat and, um, you know, more of the randomness that occurs during the stream. Um, there's always going to be the, the hot peanuts, the hot peppers, the, uh, the hot action, the hot astro and everything else that comes in between. <laughs> but I do thank you all very, very much for tuning in today and checking out the, the rollout of the SLS. And as a, just for me, really just solidifying that I want to buy the, um, uh, the, the Lego S uh, Lego uh, SLS that we will build on stream at some point if we reach that goal. So we are already halfway to the halfway goal. And I, I thank you all very much for that. Those who have donated bits and those who have gifted subs and resubscribed and subscribed to the channel. I thank you all so much for that. It is um, always well appreciated. Um, that <laughs> like I said, we're halfway there to halfway there. So I, I, I appreciate it very, very much. Um, thank you all so much for, for tuning in tonight. What we're going to do, I think, let us go say hello to... Uh, I'll send you guys over to... What is Hyena Plus? Hyena Plus raided into us um, a little while ago. Not too long uh, not too long ago, so we're going to go say hello to Hyena Plus. Um, 
Looks like they're doing a little bit of board games tonight. Usually does some Lego builds, but those are our our raid messages. Feel free to please copy those down for the subscribers. You got the holy potatoes for those who are not subscribed. I got you covered with the Earth and Carl Sagan, the one and only. But let's go say hello to uh, to Hyena Plus. Make sure we got that in there. Perfect. So yes, once again, our raid messages. If you want to get in on the Discord, feel free to join us on there for our offline content. Twitter is where I'll be do, do, dropping any updates of upcoming streams, um, unlike tonight where I just kind of started. But hopefully you had a good time tonight, and uh, we'll be checking out more of the information coming through of the test results from, the, uh, from NASA's SLS, and we'll be back tomorrow evening with some more astronomy chat. And like I said, weekend, we're going to be off. We're back during the week and rolling back into our regular schedule. So until then, hope you had a very good night. As always, my name is Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. I'm not here to change the world. I'm here to share the universe. Have a very good evening. We'll see you all again real soon. Take care.